Caixo Egunon, bueno, lo primero, eskerrik asko, hemen, ba, aukera egoteko aumera, Hello, thanks so much for having given me this opportunity to speak to you today, especially having heard everything that you had to say this morning, which is very inspiring. I think it's really important that we keep our energy up, that we carry on together, all working to achieve this coming together of technology and machines. I was going to explain this idea of general director, the general director of BAIC. I'm hoping that increasingly there are women in the world of technology that we can take a step forward and become an active part of the world of technology. I'm going to skip through and please uh, come with me on this journey in the world of AI. I'm going to try to make it something that everybody can understand because what is important is that these kinds of challenges, we take ownership of them. It may well be that there was a time when these news items via the media brought us closer to technology as if we were on one side and technology was on the other side or as if waiting if we didn't have a certain number a certain kind of knowledge we couldn't join the move to the future what's important for me once you've listened to my talk is that you stop thinking like that that we know that we all all of us, each and every one of us, have to take an active role in this change. Why do I say that? Because we're going to see it. This technology field is actually just a set of new tools. It's very transformative. It's very disruptive. And it's changing the world, of course. And we'll talk about that. Because we're realizing uh, that now we're using a small part of it, but and actually we've been using these technologies for several months now. Probably the challenge is going to be to realize that actually this is all within our reach, within our grasp, and this knowledge that we inherently have, either as people, as a human being, of course, these soft skills that we call, but also as practitioners in whichever field we work in, this is going to be the key point that we're going to reach via technology, but not the other way around. So this is the state that's important for us to be at. So yes, I'm Laura Marron, and I'm come to talk to you about our knowledge from the BAI. C. BAI C is something that was set up by the Basque government, but actually we're a public-private entity. So we get knowledge from different stakeholders, the stakeholders that go to make up the Basque Country's ecosystem. And this allows us to see what challenges and needs are out there. Because part of the subject is this. It's not just technology and people that have to understand each other, but rather people with each other. And that's what I'm going to try to do to get this challenge nearer to each and every one of us. It's not somebody that knows about technology is going to have to solve this, but each and every one of us. What is artificial intelligence? There are probably better definitions than the one I'm going to give you. But I'll try to give you one a little bit inspiring because it's an inspiring day. We're trying to build a future, the future that we want to all contribute towards. Artificial intelligence is the science of making machines do things that would have required intelligence if that something had been carried out by a human. Marvin Minsky said that. Marvin Minsky was around when the term AI was coined. It's important to remember that because it's nothing new. It's not just because 
ChatGPT has appeared recently. No, it's a definition that's been around for many years. And it's important to realize that here in the Basque Country, we've got many professionals that have been working, researching, implementing these technologies for many, many years. This just professionally, but personally, we've also spent years merged with new technologies with our mobile phones. That's quite clearly with our cars, the technologies that our cars have inside them. So to park properly or the route we should follow when we go to work or recommendations that we receive via our mobile phones. Of course, there's something else that we'll also mention which is that these are technologies that we've consumed without actually out realizing that or without having the criterion that's so necessary to use, the human criterion. Why do I say that? Because these are a set of tools I'm going to have to use and I'm going to use, of course, but what's important is to know that I'm using them, to know what the implications of that use is and what my role is going to be every time I use these technologies, these tools. This is something that artificial intelligence, which has been with us for many years now, but it's only now that we're realizing that what that means. So we need to move to action. You're going to realize that we can do a lot, actually. First thing I want to highlight is that we need to know when we're using any AI tool. AI, at the end of the day, is just a trained system that recommends uh, things to us. It has biases. It can make mistakes. We need to realize that. This is what's so important. That's why we humans need to take part. Well, we can't completely delegate. delegate. So we need to learn things in a more sustainable and in a safer way. What's key here is sometimes people say, oh, you know, our machine's going to replace us. The question isn't so much that. Is rather, are we as people going to take a f step forward and be all those things that we need to be, because when I use these tools, when I consume, as it were, these tools, I need to have criteria, I need to be educated, I need to be trained, that's what we're here for today. And I also need to be aware of what I do know and what I don't know. And what I do know I need is that maybe I need to be cautious, maybe I need to get more information. That's what we're seeing now. And maybe at a societal level, and on the level of new generations, it's not so much just a, even a question of age. It's more how much I should delegate of my humanity into technology. That's the question. That's the issue that should never be in the equation. We should never delegate our humanity into technology. That's within our hands, and that's not very technological. I'll talk about that shortly. Let's just understand what AI is at a, at a high level. It's like a box, a box that works on a series of algorithms. It uses data, and of course, it needs to be fed. Data need to be fed into it. Uh, those are the inputs, and then there are outputs from that data. Those outputs may be a recommendation or content generation. For example, that happens with generative AI, AI or a decision. It depends on the level of autonomy that we give to this box, this AI. But here I ought to nuance. We've already spoken about data. Andre and G, who's an expert in AI, and has easy courses that we can all understand for all members of the public. He equates AI to a rocket, a rocket that to orbit in space needs fuel. If I don't have good technology in my rocket, in this case it's algorithms, and I don't have the necessary fuel, i.e. the data, then that rocket won't orbit. And that's why I want to move on to data. Another issue that we need to be aware of, we need to be aware of where we are in time. 
we're at a time of the data economy. And sometimes we're worried that we can't do anything with that data. In fact, we can. We all generate data. We all consume data. And we need to attach importance to these data personally and from a professional viewpoint. We're very used to selling products, talking about product-based uh, economies. And we're now going to move on to a service-based economy, a data-based economy. So the first thing we need to do is to appraise the data that we have and that we generate, that we create, and start thinking, and moving back to the human side of things, and start thinking a little bit differently. That doesn't mean that we need to know about algorithm nor artificial intelligence. What we need to know is that if I'm in a VET college, I need to know how that college is being managed. If I'm in a company, I need to know what my customers need. If I'm in a college, what my students need. And with this market knowledge, with this business knowledge, that's when we can add technology in. That's when it becomes important. And that's what I wanted to tell you about. Now, let's become part of this change. What do we really need to do, each and every one of us, to take these steps? The message that we have in BAIC is very much business-oriented. I'm going to try to translate our message, because clearly, we companies are also people. It's not that a company changes, but rather the people in the company decide to change. Our ecosystem doesn't change on its own, but the people that are in the ecosystem change. So what we try to do is to get across a easy to understand message that we can all take on board. And we need to understand that technology and business goes hand in hand. What do I mean by that? People talk about how humans and machines need to understand, but actually people from different fields need to understand each other. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that those data scientists, and I'll talk more about data science shortly, but those data scientists that know about artificial intelligence in the conversations that they have can talk use words that nobody else understands to use their jargon. We all do that. Once we know something about a subject, we start using jargon that nobody else can understand. But actually, people in the world of business do the same. They can talk about advanced kinds of valves or people that uh, things that come from their sector or if you're talking about VET from a specific subject. But what you need to do is everybody to make an effort so that when I talk to you about AI and if we're working on a collaborative project together, I understand, I try to understand how you speak or the language that you use and vice versa. Otherwise, because things will go badly. And the same goes from a business side of things. Businesses can't think that a supplier and understands the business's needs. And if nobody understands that, then nobody's expectations will be met. So it's this coexistence, which is so important, just to coexist for a few weeks so that everybody knows, everybody understands. And I haven't included here regulations, the legal side of things. This is another thing that needs to be added, which is how we start talking to our legal teams in our different organizations so that we are ethical in the way we design these technologies. Another thing that we need to consider is all the other problems in these areas, for example, all the nuances on all the different practitioners in the sector. Once we've understood that, uh, once we've thought about what we can do, what this set of technologies can do, and by the way, I'm just going to add something which isn't very technical so that we understand so that we understand AI 
is actually a set of technologies which include data processing, machine learning, natural language processing, the part that talks with us in a text format. There's also augmented vision. People have spoken about that, which is really, and it's really important in immersive surroundings. But actually, this mix of technologies is what makes our potential so broad and so varied and with all these different types of application. What we've done is firstly to look at examples, examples that are already being used and applied. They're very interesting here because they can inspire the whole of the ecosystem. If I'm a company, a business, which is uh, speedy, I can find out what is happening in other sectors and take it ideas from them. Or if I'm a company that's less mature, I can see what others have done so I can start asking for a little bit like a catalog so I can ask for something that somebody else did with some other technique professionally or personally I can say oh I'd like to work in this kind of a company to do this kind of thing it's really interesting what Pedro Miguel Echenique said he said that we need to explain what we're doing in the world of science there's an interesting side to this it's not just a matter of explaining science but applied science what is what does our industry do what does our sector do what do our companies do because actually we creating talent, but that talent wants to work, wants to work with us. And sometimes we don't take into consideration the value of the initiatives that we're working on. That's really key. So these examples that we've got of use cases need to be taken to the field of education. So it's important to look talk about application, you can have real examples of, oh, you know, this company in this sector has used this kind of artificial intelligence and applied it in this way. It's making things tangible. So that we don't just see a cloud full of things that are in the future, in inverted commas. Of course, the future's really interesting and needs to be built together. But there's part of this technology, it's already real, it's already here. And to make it tangible, make it real, it's important to see the examples of others and apply them to our field. So within this line, what can we use it for? We've got cases of prediction to analyze trends, correlations to anticipate what might happen in the future. This isn't mapped onto sectors because what can be used in a health sector can maybe also be used in other sectors. It may well be that we are more interested in advanced manufacturing, energy, or health, or biosciences. But in the field of f food and farming, for example, a lot can be done in the world of food and farming with in artificial intelligence, for example, the banking world has also many, many algorithms that are very, very cutting edge. But here, we need to say that in each sector where we're going to be using AI, where our starting point is. I'm going to link that to another subject, which is the issue of digitalization. In the Basque country, we're at an interesting, say, shall we say, starting point because our digitalization process is very strong, it's doing very well, and our companies now have the data available. But, and this here comes the but, as I said earlier, AI, this engine, this um, rocket, needs fuel. Data is necessary. And what you'll see is that not any kind of data is valid. You'll see that the digitalization that we've done is good, it's a starting point, but it's insufficient. So we really need to, to manage our expectations. Maybe we want to start. It really depends, of course, the kind of projection you want to give to your projects. 
as everything is recommended, you need to use something simple, then use its transformative potential. But also say, oh, I've got data. Why can't I apply them now? It may well be that the, because the data that you've got aren't aimed at what you need. So these kind of initiatives depend on the type of data you have. You build the needs that you have for your data, and then you get your product. Let's give you some examples. I'm sure all of you have used AI without actually realizing it. All these examples, you've probably given your personal data. And if you hadn't, you wouldn't be able to use certain tools. But at a more industrial level for prediction, to find out what the sales prediction is going to be from next month, and then decide based on that information how much material I need to manufacture certain things. Quality, parts inspection, optimization, how to organize a production plant so that it's more efficient, or how in a hospital to organize A&E so that I can offer the best patient care possible, or I can use that for my teaching staff, how to organize my staff team so that their motivation and knowledge levels are what's expected of them. And even more important, and this is also linked to something I said earlier, creativity. These kinds of tools can be used to be very efficient, and I can reach the very limits of efficiency. But once again, it's a set of tools. Is that what I want? It may well be that I use them for some things, but not for other. But I, and I still need to carry out and create R&D in different creativity environments. It may well be that it's not time or occupation. So that's why it's so important to go back to the human side of things. So we need to be clear on what kind of society, what kind of ecosystem, and what kind of businesses we want to build. Then we'll use them, because technologies in the end start with a need. That's why vision is so important. What we work on, on the more business side of things, but which is also important to be made clear for everybody because, of course, we're working with the employees, the people of the future, and that's the future we want to build together. These kinds of tools have different levels and different. there's different ways of applying them. People talk about efficiency a lot. They talk about doing what we used to do, but in a more efficient way. Optimizing, for example, the way I use my time, my quality expect inspection, how I teach even. That, that's a way of optimizing things. If I'm honest, maybe the first pilots, you do that. That's great. It's not that I, I'm not ambitious, but I just want to know how to, these technologies are used. But it's very important to have something else in mind, which is the transformation stage. That means that I can generate new forms of waking, working based on these kinds of technologies. That means, for example, I can know more about my students, my car, my customers, my working team. And in that way, I can personalize far more the user's experience. I can make, for example, the education that I offer to a set of students can be far more tailored. Or the product that I sell to a specific ecosystem can be too. Another thing that I could offer is, and this refers to this idea of what am I using AI for, I can offer a friendlier working space, a friendly environment. It can be safer. It can be more immersive. 
where I can have continuous recycling and I can reach a higher level, which is even more disruptive, which is what we all need to be open to. But maybe I shouldn't think on such a high level. I need to be open for that to happen, but I don't need to think that it's so far away from me. Because sometimes people have this great idea and we're used to seeing in the media how somebody's got a great idea, but that actually moves us further away. You think, oh, I'm never going to have such a good idea as so-and-so had. We don't need to put that barrier up. What's important is that each and every one of us takes steps and learn. All of this can be learned. Innovation can be learned. The new ways of thinking as well. And the first thing is to believe that we can do this and also start with baby steps because we're not going to jump into this void without a parachute. What's important is to have open mind, take baby steps, and in this case, of course, train, training. You in VET are key so that all these transformations of our society and of economy become possible. So this vision that we talk about, it's important to bring it down to a ground level so that we know what we can do as a person and what we can do as an industry, what we've worked on, and that may be interesting for education and individual level, are documents that we can all understand so that we can all become part of this change. A key part of this is to know who we are, because there's a, a, a part of us, as I said earlier, we've had AI in the ecosystem for many years now. We've got people in universities, in vocational education and training, at a bus in business, but actually we've been busier doing them rather than talking about it. This is when it's necessary to take a bit of time, to take space and time to share, to find out who's out there, what they've done, who and what, and contact them and say, oh, we want to do this project, but somebody else has already done it, so maybe they can explain to me how to go about it. And we can be told the truth, and people can say to us, well, we didn't get it right first time. So to do things uh, right, for things to go right, we need to do things uh, differently to what was expected. That's where we learn. We have the habit of only telling the good side of things, which uh, uh, brings us further from others. And we say, no, they've done it because this is a super big uh, company or so and so, and I'm not going to know how to do this. When they started, uh, some things went well for them, others didn't. But we are in ongoing uh, improvement uh, processes. So I'm going back to the start. We need to understand each other so that we can set indicators that will allow us to understand if we're doing things as expected or not. And this uh, part of the vision and where we want to go, because in vision I didn't talk about uh, how we look into what the market is doing in general terms, what are competitors doing, because we're not only looking uh, into ourselves and where uh, we want to be in uh, some time from now and then review that, because another issue is not to believe we've done things in a mistaken manner because in two years it cannot be applied. Things are changing so quickly that that's what has to happen. In two years, probably, you will have a better position for uh, other um, issues, and it's important to continue to be 
agile and being able to be uh, flexible and agile in our change. For the inspiration, uh, we have to use those uh, user cases that are also public and you can access. In your field, it's very interesting because even for uh, classroom teaching, you can know what's really happening and not and to link it. I believe in v VT, it's part of the fundamental value of uh, seeing how uh, what you are teaching is useful. We also have different uh, dynamics, and sometimes we can collaborate with uh, different agents. Uh, dynamics in which we have agents that are going at a faster speed, and they need uh, areas where they can share new technologies, but most of us are not there, are not in the same sphere. So we need environments to leave uh, our fear aside and work with these technologies because sometimes I use them without knowing so. Now that I know I want to use them in a conscious manner and with focus, I want to reflect on how to do it. These are dynamics in which what's most interesting is that we put in contact a business know-how with technological know-how and they need to understand each other. And also, we have different sessions in which we work together with uh, companies to move forward. And now I'm going to go into the last uh, part, and that is who are the uh, people that make all of this uh, possible. We've talked about uh, working as a team and cooperation. And now, more than ever, that cooperation is key. What are we going to need to continue to progress in this kind of projects? We call it organization, but I think it would uh, have a better name, or a better name would be opening to open to change, cultural change, and always uh, uh, forget the idea of I already learned that, or I've always done it in this way. I have to relearn. It's always like uh, uh, this, and I don't know how much of uh, what we learn can stay there frozen, let's say. Of course, there are some uh, basics and fundamentals that would stay there, also some values. But it's important for us to be open to continue learning and to continue using this kind of uh, tools. Maybe I've learned something this year, but next year there's another way of doing it. So I can look at this in two ways, saying, oh, I already knew this and now it's worthless, or try to change things and say, well, this is really interesting. It's a talent, but it's great to have the opportunity to start again and learn it again. And of course, this requires training and group motivation, because it is true that there's days that when uh, new tools have just uh, uh, turn up. There's days that I will be angry because I've just developed it with a previous tool, and uh, we would have to then change uh, things and uh, understand that we need to continue progressing as an ecosystem. Talent is also uh, one of the uh, big uh, things uh, here, and in fact, we're aware of this because it, that's us, but those that are coming behind us and that we'll be learning the new use of all these tools. Also, another nuance that's important. Not everyone has to learn absolutely everything. So I don't have to uh, have the idea of everything being very difficult to learn about. For example, I have a car, I know how to drive it, but if I have a problem, I take it to uh, the uh, workshop, but that doesn't mean that I know less. The way which I use the car uh, and uh, specific uh, AI tools would be exactly the same as with the car. Sometimes now I try to connect to a meeting and things are not going well, so I look into what I've done uh, 
uh, wrongly, and uh, that is something that will happen. But we need to believe that we can because we all have to learn, and this is the challenge that we face. Now I'm going back to this uh, part. Now, once I've chosen what I want to do, what it's the future and the evolution with my organization or my work team. Now I've been inspired by other uh, user cases at a user level, Europe level, that have uh, worked on something similar because we don't have the time to reinvent the wheel. It's better to collaborate and take their work uh, as a starting point. So now, once I've done all of this, I've engaged the team because that's also very important to believe in collaboration and participation of the whole team from the starting point. I have a team that can address this kind of uh, projects. There's part that should be in the organization, but also another part can uh, be um, employed uh, outside uh, the company. I don't need all the know-how on AI in-house. And then is uh, when I start to work with uh, technologies. So it's not just use AI in your lives and that's it. Because some say, no, I can't because I don't know about this. No, we start uh, from what we know. And once we decide what we want to do, and that's not an easy thing uh, to decide, but that's what we can reflect on. It is then uh, when we decide on the technologies that we're going to use. And this is what will be changing in a faster way. But the other part, which is uh, more human, are the values and pillars that are not uh, changing, are the foundations that maintain us where we are. And this brings us to the ecosystem and the fact that you cannot do this on your own. It is the ecosystem, uh, what we work on from uh, Byte. Our association puts all the pieces of the puzzle together in the Basque country, all those that are concerned on AI, so that uh, together we can create uh, synergies. We have the... Uh, education uh, side of things, and you're a part of it, that. Then we have the science and technology centers, so there's a, a link between education and uh, businesses. And also in businesses, we've differentiated between AI supplier companies and AI uh, user companies. So it's not so much if a company uh, manufactures, because up till now, Companies were divided into clusters or what uh, we applied these products for. But in this case, we want to simplify this to the needs. And that way we see who our possible partners are, who will help me with developments, and who is going to use that AI to improve products, services, working dynamics, and so on and so forth. And uh, these user companies will uh, end up being absolutely everyone in a few years. And of course, all of this with the support of uh, public institutions that are also part of this as uh, stakeholders, uh, creating awareness, uh, but also as those that demand this kind of tools. In this case, this mix of uh, stakeholders is present in our ecosystem. And I'm going to close with uh, two uh, ideas. First of all, I would like to speak about who are those people that know about uh, AI. What does this mean? Who are these people? Why is it important to know who they are? Well, there's a part that is really necessary, and that is a training, but also the generation of expectations and what I need to do, and then find the skills and the people that uh, cover these uh, needs and not demand a specific kind of knowledge that sometimes is uh, not what we really need. Let me explain myself. 
In the life cycle of an AI project, if we look at the left, there's a, a part of a, a going from the business case to the user case, something that can be executed. Once this part is uh, clear, this first part is clear, this part is developed by people that have uh, worked uh, with, by bringing together the technology and the business. These are the people that we're going to need more and more in our organizations and ecosystems because they will make uh, both uh, teams understand each other. And it is uh, here that those in uh, light blue here, uh, data some things are the people that know about uh, in data as they know if things are well digitized, if I need data that I don't have. So all this part is uh, fundamental for a project to be developed adequately. And it's not AI, it's the work before AI. Sometimes we uh, request uh, people that know about AI for the uh, next stages, like for example, when deciding the model that is going to be used, and then we go on to production, where we adapt to systems. And then there's a last uh, part where there's an uh, uh, ongoing improvement uh, process. And in the first and last uh, part, we have a, a great opportunity for those that have studied uh, VET because there's people that will work on acquisition and curating of data and people that will be working on the maintenance of systems. So the reflection here is that not everyone has to know about absolutely everything and that we need to, to go into the detail of what I need for these projects because probably all this uh, central uh, part in blue is something that I can outsource because in projects we see that uh, usually we work more on the acquisition and uh, creating of uh, data. And to, to finish, We will need a uh, to follow a roadmap and uh, questions that bring us uh, from the need uh, to the application of artificial intelligence in which uh, technology would only be at the end of the process. And something fundamental here, remember that the future is already here. It's a wonderful, it's created by us. And in fact, uh, this is done based on ethics and, and humanism. So this is not anymore only a technological field. Technology is one more tool that we we'll need to learn how to use. But the challenge will be the way in which we understand each other and how we decide to use these technologies. Thank you.